Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. How are you today? We're so happy to be together uh, to speak about the Alpujarras. It has a difficult name. So, Julia, can you give us a hand with the technology, please? Absolutely. So, everyone is on mute, so we can't hear or see you, but please do send us any questions you have at any point during the presentation. You can just shoot those to us through uh, the questions box on your screen, and we will get to those all at the end of the presentation. And as always, this will be recorded and sent to you tomorrow, along with a little insider's guide uh, to the destination. All right, back to you, Virginia. Thank you very much, uh, Julia, for your support. So, Las Alpujarras, which is also very off the beaten path and a beautiful part of Andalusia, part of Spain with very amazing history. Great view, big mountains, the Sierra Nevada, white villages, really off the beaten path, not explored, very authentic, very real. And you know, there's a story attached to it. Uh, uh, we are in the south of Spain, of Europe, uh, and in the south of Spain. Uh, great weather. Here we are, so the Alpujarras, uh, you see uh, in the map on the right, is in red. On top of it is the, the city of Seville, or, excuse me, the city of Granada. And here, about here, is Malaga. So it's like right in between, in the mountains. And there's a story attached to this place because Granada was the last kingdom reconquered by the Catholic kings. Uh, so when we reconquered Granada, all the Muslims were pushed out of Spain. So this is the king, Boabdil el Chico, that, that was the, the Arab king of Granada. Uh, they were suffering so much hunger. They were blocked. They were inside, isolated. And at that point, he had to go down to speak to the Catholic kings. Uh, he gave them the keys of the city. So the story attached uh, to, to this is that when Boabdil was given the hands, the mother of Boabdil, with everybody, was leaving the Alhambra. And there's a very well-known said in Spain that is, cry as a woman for what you fail to defend as a man. So I, it, it really explains, he, he left the kingdom, he left everybody outside of Granada, all the, all the Muslims and the Arabs, and they were allowed to stay. They didn't have to convert. So it was more or less okay. But after a year, the Catholic kings decided that they had to convert. So, you know, they didn't want to. So many of them left the city of Granada. And where did they go? They go to the Alpujarras. So this is Bob Deal having the last look to Granada before departing. So these are the Alpujarras, you know, you live from Granada and it's all this area in the mountains and the mountains on top of them, you see, that's the Sierra Nevada. So here's where all those Muslim, those Arabs, most of them artisans were to move. They moved there, they stayed to live there. So this is maybe the first village you, you pass by when you enter the Alpujarras is Lanjarón. And every Spanish person knows Lanjarón world because it's a place where, you know, the, the natural spring water is fabulous. And it has this uh, historical like spas uh, where people went to, to enjoy the waters. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. Also was bordered for some time, so you, you get the castles that we are trying to rebuild. But very important, they, this, the, the, the historical spots here, they, they were visited by prominent people like Manuel de Falla, the Spanish musician, and also Virginia Woolf. Uh, stay here. So this is Lanjaron water that you can buy all over Spain. So very important for all of us. So the three most beautiful villages of the Alpujarras, they say, are Pampaneira, Bubiona, Capileira. Pampaneira, you see this architecture is typical Moorish. So all you see here, all the crafts, all the artisans work, all the architecture, the way the villas are set up is like very, very, very Arabic because they were living in there for very, very long. The views in Capileira are fabulous. Uh, it's the highest one of the three. So Capileira, Pubion and Pampaneira down the hill. Uh, and the views are amazing, look winter with the sierra and the back. And this very peculiar architecture, if you go to the north of Morocco, you see exactly the same, totally 
exactly the same architecture. This Arabic architecture, these villages are made of beautiful flowers all over. You know, the, the mandolin in the bread, everybody buying the fresh bread, a very local feel uh, in these villages. Look at the chimneys. The views are fabulous. Very, very rural. And many of them were artisans, we were saying. So textiles, that's one of the big, big things here in this area, in all of the villages. Some are new, but many are old uh, machines, but they're very, very old, hundreds of years old. The mothers give to the daughters and generation after generation. It's an area also that many British moved to, uh, to enjoy, uh, you know, when they retire. Trevelet is very well known because it's very high in the mountains. It's the village, the highest village on the Iberian Peninsula, so really high. And they have pigs, they are not Iberian pigs, they are kind of porks, but they do like a ham, their local ham, which is not Habugo, it's not, uh, it's not the, this Iberian black ham, but it's also fabulous and very, very well known alone. Many villages, Great views, mountains, little lakes all over. All these, I mean, you may not notice it, not this because the Spanish is not your first language, but all of the names sound like foreigner to us, like a little bit. They have a little bit of this Arabic. You see all the remains of the big constructions. Beautiful. And this, this is the lady washing. Uh, she may not have a washing machine at home. Uh, but this is where they traditionally go to wash. And this is a llama in Almeria. It's the very end of the Alpujarras. It's almost like a desert. It's very, very unique. With the bridge, Ventarique. Very special, unique names in the Alpujarra. You see, it's very, very different. And as you get to the eastern side, southern, it gets drier but it's very, very authentic. Not many tears here, it will be very hard to find an American around, uh, but you know, it has all the authenticity and the charm and the beauty. Great architecture. And at a point, you know, when the, the Muslims, the Salafs that left Granada, stayed there for a couple hundred of years and King Philip II, finally asked them to retire, to, to move somewhere else or to convert. Because he wanted to be everybody Christian in his kingdom, so to have one only law. So then every, when everybody converted, you know, the, the, many of the most began turning to churches and, you know, that's why we have a very rich church. We also have all the history of the, you know, because they have stayed there, we have all the architecture. So we also have the Arabic baths and the pottery, of course. It's one village after the other, and it gets very dry. And if you get a little outside of the Alpujarras in the Almeria, you see all this sand at the end. It's, it's an area where they film many of the movies in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and Far West movies. Many of them were filmed outside of this Alpujarras neighborhood. It's like the Far West. And again, maybe this was like a little castle if you take away the Minare, you know, the, the, the uh, bell, the bell tower, uh, and then converted into a church when they didn't need to have a castle anymore because they, need, they didn't need to be protected. Very, very special and very nice and very, very off the beaten path. And even here, we cultivate grapes and do the wine. You know, do, we do wine all over. All over the country, higher, lower, you know, the wine, the olive oil, it, this is what we are made of for. And there are many, many, uh, you know, there's one area with many wineries here. They cook the, the olla de San Marcos, uh, which is like a stew you see on the left hand side. But you see how they cook it? They cook it outdoors, like for the entire village. So it's really fun. It's, it's a big fiesta. They celebrate. It's very, very unique. And we have the ham, and I tell you, I it's not it's it's very different to the Habugo ham, and it's not good cholesterol for you. It's the bad one, but it's a fabulous one. So this is the jamón de Trevelet will be closer to the to the ham uh, 
Parma ham or the one they have in, in Italy. Of course, olives and olive oil. Honey. Honey is very important, especially in the in Lanharon village. They even have a museum uh, on the on the honey. So it's, it's protected. It's like a, a special type of honey from Lanjaron, like very, very from the Pujadas, very, very unique. So, of course, the uh, great pathways for hiking or for biking, really very nice. And from here, you know, the, what you need to visit is Granada. It really makes sense. And it will be a great day excursion if you have travelers in Granada, and then they decide on going to the, to the or they go to the coast of the sol afterwards. It's a great stop on the way because you truly understand how things happen and where these people move and how. Very, very nice. Uh, Almeria, which is the next province into, to the east uh, of Granada. A beautiful fortress also here. It's very, very nice. Malaga with its bullring. Uh, remember, Malaga has a lot of Arabic and Roman patrimony, so it's very, very, and Picasso was born there, so many things that can be done. A great day excursion. So, okay, reality is we don't have very upscale accommodation in this area. All is very rural, uh, but it's casual. Okay, three, four star, that's it. The, we have a couple of nice places for rental, so that may help. Um, but, you know, if travelers want an authentic experience, the, the price may be that they don't have the very upscale uh, accommodation because if they, there was one, Maybe many other people would go and visit. So, you know, everything has its shiny side. It's a beautiful area, really, of the Peter Pan. Very nice to visit. And very authentic accommodation. Some nice restaurants, heavy food, uh, you know, high in the mountains, but very nice uh, quality. Even have a, I wanted to, to include this vegetarian because it's very, Special and it really says that even the places lost wherever uh, you can think of in Spain, you are able to find a vegetarian restaurant. So you know it's very good. So as always, staying on the safe side in Andalusia, pushing the wide open spaces, the outdoor experiences, and keeping away from the crowds, of course. So we are here to help. And before we we close, because today is the last season. I wanted to wrap up a little bit and uh, say in loud voice uh, some of the things we've been saying uh, that will, uh, you know, explain a little bit more about Andalusia. First of all, this is the flag of, of Andalusia on the right hand side. I didn't show to you. I felt I had to. And green is the color of Andalusia. So good to remember that if you think a little further. You think of Northern uh, uh, Africa, green is this Muslim color. So, you know, it has something attached to it. So really, this is the flag. So, rich history. Do you remember we began speaking about the dolmens in Antequera? You know, ancient history and patrimony to be enjoyed and to be explored. Truly unique. I mean, the size of this uh, monument is unbelievable compared to, you know, whatever other similar. Uh, great uh, importance of Spain and the south of Spain in the Roman times. We have great patrimony. This is Seville, this is Malaga. Do you see the, the, the Arabic, uh, the Muslim fortress, but you see the Roman amphitheater underneath. So, you know, really important Roman patrimony. This Roman bridge in Cordoba uh, with the mosque behind. Arabic uh, architecture, Muslim, Mudejar, as we spoke. Uh, I mean, what you see in the mosque in Cordoba is unbelievable. All these together with Romanesque and Gothic art. This is the synagogue in Cordoba also. Mudejar style, Seville, the Alcazar. I mean, one of a kind, truly unique. Uh, with this patio de Don Pedro. The Alhambra in Granada, I have to mention the beautiful Alhambra in Granada, why not? I mean, it's really key to all. And Andalusia is a lot about crafts and arts and artisan work. So the leather work is amazing. 
Ah, remember, you know, when we speak about the horses, the bull fighting, that's the south of Spain, Andalusia, so a lot of uh, the artwork, uh, the artisans work with the leather because it's needed for that. Textiles, lots of crafts, pottery, very, very important, you know, because I guess the Muslim heritage, the Arabic, the, the, the Moors we have in Spain. Astronomy, I have to put an olive because it's Andalusia. And of course, we have the olive oil. Many different fabulous uh, ones, but also the, the Serre vinegar. I guess they have the Modena in, in Italy. We have the Serre wine, the Serre vinegar, fantastic salt, salt mines to visit and explore and have fun. Of course, the Serre wine and all of the wines we produce. Uh, the prawns, Sanlúcar, the tapas. This is the land of the tapas. Uh, best place in Spain for tapas? Well, many. But I would say maybe Granada, because they give you a big plate of whatever thing with whatever drink you ask. So, and it gets better and better. So the, the tapa you get in number three drink is much better than the tapa in number two. So at the end, you, you have two glasses of wine or two cokes and you have a meal. So it's very impressive. Granada for tapas. And flamenco, of course, we didn't speak much about flamenco, but it's all over. He was born here and is, you know, the heart of it, the heart of the spirit of Andalusia. So, of course, the artisan work at this time for the guitars, uh, the luthiers, and the fiestas. It's a lot about the fiestas. So, we have carnival, I guess the last. Andalusian fiesta I enjoy was the carnival this year in, in Malaga uh, because then the world stopped because of COVID. So carnival all over, very, very important. Las Chirigotas, we call them. The feria, the fiestas, every, every single village and city of Andalusia, they set up some tents and they do a feria and then they, you dress up as a flamenco dancer and, and go with your horses is really very fun very fun and the biggest one is the one in seville but you have in malaga you have in cadiz in cordoba and the holy week the easter week with the processions very important in andalusia very very important the patios in cordoba and of course the bullfight some like it more some like it less i don't like them at all but we have bullfights all over and it's very much in the south of Spain, but still people really love it. If you go to Seville uh, and it's a Sunday and there's a bullfight, it's amazing all the many, many young people. The horses, these are the horse show we spoke about in Jerez, but also the free horses in the natural parks, the races in San Lucar, in the beach. It's the land of the horse, as well as the land of the bull. And this is Andalusia, kilometers of streets in which walls are the, the geranios, this beautiful red flower painting it. But if I have to say it in five words, I would say outstanding heritage, fabulous weather, it's a lot of outdoor living. We are in the south of the south. Great connection. It's really amazing. The airports, the high speed trains, the highways, and it's very, very children friendly. And it's the land of very happy people. We, we always say, you know, when we are driving, we stop, we put on some gas in the car and all of this, and what a nice guy was helping me. Of course, you're in Andalusia, happy people. So this is a diploma we'll be sending all of you. We want to thank you for your interest on being with us uh, during these weeks. It's been a privilege. And I think that is all for today. I want to say thank you again. Don't uh, forget, uh, tr clients truly will appreciate traveling with a locat in your pocket when the skies open up and we'll be back again. So thank you very, very much, uh, Julia. All right. Thank you, Virginia. We do have a few questions today. And if anyone has any last minute, please do send those along. All right. So first up, uh, would you recommend going by Ave to Antequera or Granada to get to this area? Totally. Either from Granada or from Malaga, 
there's also a high speed train to Malaga. It's halfway between the two. Uh, it's an hour and drive, an hour and a half drive. And yeah, very easy. It's accessible, very accessible from Granada or from Malaga. So if landing in Madrid or Barcelona, maybe taking the high speed train, or they may want to, to fly into Malaga directly. There are many more flights to Malaga and to Granada, but both will do. Okay, can we go back to the map again uh, so people can see where this area is one more time? Here we go. Is this little oops corner here? So if this is Granada here, this is the Sierra, and it's at the other side of the Sierra Nevada. You know, you know Sierra Nevada is a fabulous ski resort in the south of Spain, as we spoke some weeks ago, so it's down there. I hope this helps. It will be like a one hour, a long hour, one hour, 15 minutes drive to Malaga and to Granada, similar. Yeah, very, very much. Okay, and if people are staying here, uh, could they visit the beach on a day trip? Totally, totally, it's like 30 minutes drive. Well, depending on where you are, if you are in the eastern part, it will really take a little longer. But if you are the western part, Bubion, Lanjarón, is very, very close by. It's uh, one thing that is very unique and makes, to, in, my, in my eyes, Granada like amazing place. Because if you're in the city of Granada, you can go very off the beaten path to Dar Pujadas. You can, you decide you wake up like you want to go skiing and in less than an hour, you're in a fabulous ski resort. Or you want to go to the beach, in less than an hour, you've been the beach. Truly amazing. And it's great how maybe in the mountains or in the Alpujarras it's a little colder because it's cold, it's the snow in the Sierra Nevada, but maybe it's, you know, 65, 75 degrees by the water. So in very short space of time because of the height of the mountains, it's very, very, you know, unique and special. Amazing. Um, all right, so someone is wondering why the house, the roofs of the houses are all flat. Uh, we're used to seeing a lot of tiled Mediterranean style roofs, and this is a bit different architecture. Well, because the architecture, I wanted to go there. This architecture is like not Spanish architecture. It's like if you even go to, I mean, it is Spanish, of course, but if you go to any other village, I didn't show you this kind of ceilings in the streets, covering the, the streets. Is the way they, is the typical, is, is Arabic. You get the Arabic in there. You go to Sefzowin in the north of Morocco and it's exactly the same thing. So if you get to this area, you get this, but uh, maybe the Andalusian style, you will see the, the, the tiles. The tiles is the name, Julia? Yeah. No, the last, last the tejas. The tiles. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, the tiles. The tiles. Uh, but here they are flat because if you go to Morocco, it's the same. It's very flat. So this is a very peculiar architecture. It's very Spanish, it's very Andalusian, but it's very Moorish. It's not what you see if you drive 50 kilometers out there. It's very, very peculiar to this part. And it's because these Muslim, these Arabs, live here 200 years more than in other parts of Spain. So I guess we accommodate differently. Yeah, it's very, very peculiar. I'm glad they noticed it because it's exactly what it is. It's very unique. Fascinating. Um, all right. And now there's a lot of hiking in this area. So would you say this is an area really for avid hikers or people, would it be okay for clients that aren't in great shape but want to get outside? They totally can come. And remember, we do customize. It's mainly what we do customize is our expertise. So, you know, it's just knowing and we, we can send them to one area or another. We have very accommodating guides and there are different levels. So for everybody. Yep. Wonderful. Everybody welcome. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is the last question for today. Where next? When? What is our next webinar series going to be? Where are we going to explore? <laughs> well, I didn't tell you, Julia, but I was working during the weekend in Portugal a little bit. So we'll see. But we'll wait. We have all the fiestas now. 
we have the third COVID wave coming in. <laughs> we'll be busy. Uh, but, uh, you know, maybe February? We'll see. We'll see. And we're also thinking of doing, you know, preparing a little more on Andalusia, maybe north of Spain, the Basque Country. We'll see. <laughs> but soon. We like it. We love it. Sounds good. A little rest for the holidays first. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right, well, that's, yeah, that's it for the questions for today. Um, before I say goodbye to everyone, just again a reminder that I will, of course, be sending the recording in our pocket guide and your diplomas tomorrow. And it's been such a pleasure to join you. So thanks so much for having me, Virginia. No, thank you. Thank you so well. Thank you for the technical support and for the support with everything always. And thank you, everybody, for the interest. This has been fun. I love the truly uh, traveling together uh -huh, for these weeks. And I think uh, fall season was much better because I was with you. We were together, so that always warmed our hearts. So thank you very much. Anything you may need, remember Made for Spain and Portugal. We are here very available always uh, for a call, for an email, for a Zoom chat or whatever the need is. Okay, we are family. Thank you. Thank you very much. Until next time. Thank you.